Hey guys, Dan Giles here. Man, I'm going to tell you what, the other day we had one heck of a rainstorm. It was so bad and it was flooding so bad around here on my driveways. Here, I'll show you some pictures right here that uh, we took out probably about a dozen garage door sensors. And what door sensors? Yeah. So I went to the local overhead door and picked up a dozen door sensor packs. Comes with the brackets, comes with the sensors. And you know, you can see what we got going on here and how these things got flooded out. These sensors get wet, water gets in the electronics of them and burns them out. So I'm gonna show you what I do to prep these to install them on the door. And then we'll go install it on the door and wire it up and I'll show you all of those steps. So hang in there with me, we'll be right back. Man, I sure am hungry. I need to get something to eat. So, as I mentioned earlier, I went over to Overhead Door and I got this kit. And what I'm guessing this came with a garage door opener that uh, they might have had a big job and they had a bunch of these that they didn't use for whatever reason. So, I mean, but the sensors still work. If you go to the store and you pick up a pack of sensors, chances are you're going to get something in a box like this. And inside this box, you're going to have your two sensors, along with about 10 foot of 6 to 10 feet worth of wire. I'm going to give you the little bolts and your little wing nuts. And this is going to go on your existing brackets. So I'm going to save it for later. And I want to use the stuff that I have in this kit right here. So I'm going to open this up and pull all this stuff out, what I need. So I'm going to use the new brackets and I'm going to use some of the screws and the wing nut out of this pack to mount the sensors to the new brackets. So you're going to go through like this packet here, it's got a lot of screws in it that really don't need their but like i said this is probably something that they had for a bunch of doors they installed that didn't use all this hardware maybe a commercial job or something so let me find that other wing nut there we go and that's really all i need so set these to the side i'm gonna go ahead and separate these sensors Get something a little bit better to use here. So now that I got these like that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my sensor, grab one of my screws, install it in the bracket. And this is where you want to kind of line this up so that it's shining straight on the bracket and it bracket is kind of concaved so it's going to allow this to kind of flex around back and forth but like I said you want to make sure it's straight Go ahead and hook the wing nuts and everything back in. And I just kind of like center it because it's an oblong hole right there for the screw to go through. And I just put it in the center basically. Tighten that up. Make sure it's lined up straight this way. That way when you hook it to the, to the track on the garage door, this thing is pretty much 
pointing to the other eye. And the other thing I like to do, and this is purely your choice, but I'll get something round and wrap this thing a few times. And I'll explain to you why I do that. Give myself some extra there. And it just looks kind of neat. Pull it off. And there you go. So now all we got to do is just go mount these to the garage door track. And then wire it up. And we've got it most of the way there. You can see that when I push the button, we'll get 10 flashes. And that's definitely letting me know I got a sensor that's giving me a problem. So I'm gonna change the sensors in this garage and uh, we'll go through those steps.
One of the reasons that these sensors go bad too is that you get a flood of water comes off this roof right to this area. And then it just, if the door is open, it splashes back and hits that bottom sensor down there and it gets it wet. So by raising that sensor, I'm getting it out of the splash zone and we're going to save its life. Forgot to tell you that uh, the reason that I like to wrap that, that wire around something in a circular motion like this, if something snags that wire, it gives you some extra wire to realize that something snagged it. It's not going to pull it out of the sensor. It's not going to break the connection at where you connected the wires. And it just allows some flexibility in that wire so that if something were to happen and grab it, it, it's got some protection for it there. Uh, also, when I am wire nutting my two wires together and twisting them together, I like to go ahead and, and twist the wire, you know, back to where I pulled them apart. And that also will give it some, some strength on that connection so that if it does get pulled for any reason, it's got all those wraps to go through before it pulls the wires apart. So double the protection so that if something pulls on that wire, you've got some backup and some protection to keep them together. And then all you have to do if that does happen is just, you know, retwist them together. And if something snags the coiled wire on there, you clear the snag and then recoil it again so that it's ready for the next time should it happen so that you're good and protected. Those sensors are fairly easy. As long as they stay dry and lined up and they're seeing eye to eye, you shouldn't have any issues. Now, the sensors I have are basically for a LiftMaster, Chamberlain, Craftsman, which is pretty common, especially LiftMaster. So these sensors are, are pretty much going to look the same as, as the ones I put on. And they're going to look, chances are they'll look more like this one. Um, so you're going to get that little bit of wire that you're just going to splice in place. So like I said, as long as your sensors are seeing eye to eye, you'll be good to go. So this is Dan Giles. I thank you for watching. I hope this is going to be helpful to you. So go out there and change your sensors if that's your issue. And I'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to check out one of these two videos here for stuff that might help you in the future. And please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything that's coming up. And be sure to hit that notification bell. Anytime I upload a video, you're going to be the first to know it.